You got one. Hey y'all, it's Shade Imore, your favorite expat with nomadic tendencies. Welcome back. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're an oldie but goodie, hey boo, I see you. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. And what I'm going to be talking about today is reverse culture shock. I know that um, people hear about culture shock all of the time when it comes to you moving to another country, but there is something that happens when you return home, wherever that may be. This is my second year returning home after living in Africa, specifically Egypt. Um, some of you guys know that I was living in Tanzania first, which um, I stayed there for three months, and then after those three months, I then went to Egypt. People really don't either know about reverse culture shock or they don't believe that you can have culture shock returning back home because you're from that native country but i'm here to tell you guys you can um, the first thing that i noticed was me instantly wanting to go back to that foreign country like i missed it i felt like i no longer belonged in my native country and i know that sounds kind of funny but there are so many things that are different you kind of accept it or adapt to it to where when you come back to the united states it's like shocking and i think that's because of how the culture is set up in the western world versus how it's set up in the east transportation like let's just go ahead and get that out of the way because in the united states you know you 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 can walk some places but for the most part you have to drive everywhere and in egypt i don't have to drive anywhere i do not own a car i do not have like an international license or anything to drive i don't drive at all i get on a minivan and i go wherever i need to go or i walk everywhere i need to go the next topic that i wanted to talk about was safety and i think <laughs> it's quite interesting because i feel safer in a foreign country than I do in my native country. And we all see what's going on on the news with racism and just things happening politically that's just, it's mind boggling. Nobody is, you know, um, ignorant, if you will. Well, I would say some are, but a lot of people, if you are watching Western news, know what's going on with the gun violence and everything. Example, I did a video where my best friend took me to a mall and I've been to this mall before. I've, I've worked near this mall, had no problems when I went to the mall. I didn't have problems when I went to the mall this time. However, I felt so uncomfortable, like uncomfortable. It just felt gloomy. It felt, it felt unsafe. I just don't have any other way to put it. Let's talk about the weather. Ooh, I froze, okay, when I got back here. The weather is so bipolar, I really don't know how to feel about it. You know what I'm saying? I have like this love-hate relationship with it. In Egypt at the end, um, it, was, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? But here, I was freezing my butt off. It literally just got warm, I think like this week or the end of last week to where you don't have to wear a jacket like all day, but I'm starting to feel like I have to wear a jacket in the morning. I have to wear, I could take it off, you know, in the afternoon sometime and in the evening I need to put it back on. And I'm just not used to that. When it comes to my experiences and the stories that I'm sharing, I feel like people hear me, but they don't hear me. It's hard to relate. It's hard to relate. It's, it's no matter what I say, no matter how I, I say it, like lack of experience is not going to, you know, help you feel and catch and understand what it is that I'm saying. So yeah, when it comes to being relatable, I feel like that's definitely something that I struggle with. Uh, my friends do a good job and family, they do a good job with not making you feel weird, but there are some that kind of have you like, mm, I just think it's just something I won't talk to you about. It's sad to say this, but it's true. When I'm over in Egypt, I don't think about 
you know, having like a whole bunch of clothes or like unnecessary things. I think about those things that I actually need. I don't like to carry a lot of stuff. So I don't have like, you know, two weeks worth of clothing, you know, like a pair of clothes I wear, I can wear one time for two weeks. It's not like that, but when I come back home, I'm more cautious of what I put on, um, how I look. And I'm not saying I don't take care of myself. I'm just saying you feel pressure to look a certain kind of way, to have certain things. And I've definitely felt that being bad. The next like, thing I would have to say would be homelessness. Y'all, I haven't seen this much homelessness in Egypt. Like, um, I've seen poor, right? Unfortunately, it's expected in foreign countries, especially Africa, because it's deemed as a third world continent. But I can walk out of this beautiful apartment complex and literally right there at the door will be a homeless person sleeping. And so it really is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And I'm like, man, they need to, you know, create more shelters. And I know all homeless people don't like shelters and every situation is different, but we could definitely use some help with the homelessness that's going on here. It's a whole nother story to talk about this topic, but I'm just gonna leave it right there. So last the final thing I wanna talk about is the food or meals. In Egypt, you can get so much for your money. You get meat, you get rice, um, soups, salads, bread, and I mean, it covers the entire table for like $6. Versus here, you can't even get a salad most of the time for $6. You literally paying like $10 at Chick-fil-A. Now you can go to the store, but the way things are set up now with prices, it's just as much, you know, as in the store as it is if you just go and purchase it from the fast food restaurant. So it, everything has gone up substantially and it hurts my soul to have to pay so much money for food to see what your turnout is after you finish making it. Like, why? Why did it cost me $70 to make a lasagna? I do not know. I'm still talking about that $70. I'm still talking about the $50 that was spent on some wings and some chicken tenders. I'm I'm not over it. <laughs> I'm not over it. And I mean, it's just, you know, the reality of it. You definitely have reverse culture shock when you come home. And it's more so, I think, about adaptability and seeing America for what it is or your native country for what it is when you come back because now you have something to um, I guess base it off of or compare it to than what you did before when all you knew was the West. Yeah, I hope I didn't ramble too long. It's been a minute since I've done a sit down video, but I felt like I wanted to just share a little bit of you know, what was going on in my mind and how I feel about being back um, in the States, even for a short period of time. Well, I thank you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.